guys. I'm Braden. I'm Dan. And I'm Andrew. Thank God. Uh, I don't know. I'm sick of hearing the word plum. I don't know about you guys, but thank God we're on a break. Everyone's favorite segment, Space News, coming at you. Um, let's see what we got on the, the agenda today. Alien pathogens could hitchhike to Earth. And we're totally unprepared, experts warm. It's, we're seemingly unprepared for pathogens on Earth, if uh, the last couple days or a couple years have uh, told us anything. So, you know what? The last thing we need is space COVID. I mean, but that's also how the symbiote got to fucking Earth too, right? Yep. So, you get give and take here. <laughs> it's, like, how do you, like... I, I, like when I read, I was like, "Well, wh what do you want us to do? This seems like, like w w space pathogens we don't even know. But how do we prepare ourselves better to fight things we don't know? Well, stop that's going to fucking space. <laughs> yes, that's one solution. But uh, most of the sol <laughs> the the workable solutions that are preparing for the uh, advent of space travel becoming mundane." Uh, is the purview of the International Committee on Space Research, or COSPAR. Uh, and they've put together a panel on planetary protection, but the only thing is, is that some scientists are criticizing them because their their panel doesn't... All of the current members um, don't have any expertise in invasion science, which is actually a thing, um, which is kind of like... I assume it's like biosecurity, which is a big thing now in the last couple of years uh biosecurity has begun thing we're actually probably talking about that in the case file right now <laughs> um but you probably I, we you would know wouldn't you we've been talking about it for the last what half an hour 40 minutes <laughs> um so yeah it's they're they're not so much worried like the the because we haven't found life in our solar system yet um scientists aren't so much worried about uh those kinds of viruses but they're more kind of worried about the the possibility that a, um, a a terrestrial strain of bacteria or virus could hitchhike its way into space where they've actually seen, they've done studies with like growth of uh, E. coli in microgravity and researchers have found that some of those harmful bacteria grew even more competitive. Yeah, and it's because of the cosmic acquired... rays. It's like the Fantastic Four of cholera. And you know, the funny lot. thing, though, is I find like I find it way more likely for us to bring something to space and infect them <laughs> as opposed to us or them infecting us. Right. Like, this is true. yeah. And that's the worry. And that's what they're uh, there's, you know, scientists are kind of becoming more and more concerned about. Well, I'm I agree. But like we should be concerned at anything like even the content like we're we are dirty bombs ourselves. Like if we ever set foot on Mars. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, well, we can contaminate it. everything, but, like, you know, there's going to be bacteria on the outside of the suits. Like, we can't help it. We're filthy. We're just big clumps of, of filth. So, yeah. anyways, uh, this one was interesting. Um, I don't know if we talked about it yet, but Russia exploded. Uh, they shot up an anti-satellite missile and blew up uh, one of their satellites, which caused an insane amount of debris they actually had to notify the ISS for them to hunker down in one of their escape, uh, the, the SpaceX escape capsules, um, because there was a serious fear that this was going to impact the ISS catastrophically. Uh, but now space experts are explaining that uh, it's a huge problem. Well, we've talked about this before. It's like this shit goes around. It's It can be... Tiny particles moving so fast, we have no uh, way to clean it at all. I was reading another article today that at the rate we're collecting space debris, we eventually might have rings like Saturn that's just <laughs> that's just junk, just trash, just trash. Just fucking tr that is perfect for Earth. Yeah, there's nothing. Well, that that's symbolizes that's one of the ways. More than that. Uh, I mean, that's one of the proposed kind of plans i think i was reading the same article because it's a, a couple of scientists have proposed the idea that you could use some kind of um like a magnetic some kind of like magnetic uh like a magnetic trash gatherer essentially and then you could push and pull 
satellites uh, into a decaying orbit and so kind of put them into a ring just, around the... And then just light it on fire, right? Like, well, that's yeah, how yeah, you use the Earth's atmosphere, but then there's also the thing that because of the buildup of carbon in our atmosphere from carbon emissions, they're worried about that the... It, the atmosphere is also kind of losing some of its effectiveness at doing that. Like oh, there's, there's good. a possibility that that could become a, a problem down the road. And that if that, you know, if that problem isn't mitigated first, like this would just add, that's just exacerbate the, the, that problem. So there's that option, but then there's also the thing that they're talking about different, like NASA has been kind of pushing for a reevaluation of the guidelines of satellite uh, satellite operation. And one of them being that they should plan for satellites not to be up for what current, the current guideline is 25 years is where they have a satellite up, like a satellite's lifetime. And they're kind of pushing for that to actually be shortened. So that then would make that sense. We're making such advancements in technology that like whatever something's doing, tw like, you know, whatever shitty satellites up there from fucking 1997 you know probably Wait, isn't doing super much super nintendo was fucking 25 <laughs> years ago that was the shit right it like seems come on like, it seems like that would be a smart idea it would almost you know it's too bad because we're it's it's turning into a competition up there but it's too bad we couldn't do some sort of global endeavor where you know satellites you know aren't one nation it's we we can use them as one world so not to <laughs> we, we can't even do that i think that well Earth, i think though. the like, the one of the organizations that's at the forefront is kind of taking charge is the united states space force and their kind of plan that they're putting yeah. together they've codenamed this fucking sweet name orbital prime uh which is <laughs> they've co-opted with a couple of other um companies like yeah the autobots is that yeah what they've teamed up <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> and they're gonna face off against those russians and the decepticons yeah <laughs> Um, this one, uh, was an interesting read, a new electric propulsion engine, uh, for spacecraft test fired in orbit for the first time. It's weird when these things happen. I didn't even remember reading anything that they were planning this. I mean, maybe oh, that's for something like this. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess it would just power, you could power it on solar. I mean, it would, it would make sense. Right. Well, this one I'm surprised was it's launched... not. I'm surprised it's not run by one of that Tesla Roadster that's currently floating around in space. Um, I guess th this this satellite that they tested was launched by the the company with the fucking sweet ass name uh, and clever name Thrust Me. Um, oh. is the name of the company. Genius. And uh, it's amazing. Absolutely. I can see genius. foresee a ton of government contracts coming to Thrust Me. Um, so what they did is they replaced the typical uh, xenon-powered, uh, uh, xenon particle-powered engine that you usually get on satellites. The ones that use uh, most satellites use that now. They replaced it with a type of uh, engine that would use iodine gas instead. Now iodine is more favorable in, in this scenario because uh, they found that iodine, um, it's it can be stored in multiple forms. It can be stored like xenon has to be a gas. So therefore you have to have like these big bulky high pressurized canisters of a xenon gas within the satellites and they have to use those. So that kind of limits your options on design and, and like and storage and like all, all that stuff. Um, th what they did with the iodine one is they launched one up there using iodine gas, um, iodine fuel. So you can actually store it in both gas form and uh, solid form. And so by using that, it kind of, it also opens up a lot of avenues into like the form, like you could make some of the applications they said are probably like, if this became the primary thing and they worked out some of the kinks, uh, which include kind of like maneuverability, uh, things like that, uh, you'd be able to like make satellites smaller. You'd be able to, um, like make the parts like smaller and all that kind of things, more compact satellites. Now let's make and, them bigger, um, like monster trucks. <laughs> Way bigger, right? Bigger Some is better. On them. I, I like that it fires an ion beam. It just sounds so cool. Well, yeah, like, you just like ionize particles. It's yeah. basically, yeah, you just electrify it and you kind of shoot them out and they're heavy enough to kind of prov provide, like, I mean, you're in zero gravity, so anything going out is going to happen. Is, yeah, you're, you're moving. Gonna push out. So you're, you're thrusting, moving, so. baby. Thrust me. Everything we've talked about <laughs> today, just, I feel like you could name superheroes after everything. Every single thing we've spoken yeah, about. Yeah, thrust me, especially. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's, like, it's such a good name. Yeah. <laughs> such a good name. It is a great name. Mm. Anyways, hey, that's it for Space News this week. We'll be back next week with some more Space News. But uh, back to Case File 213. 13, yeah. Uh, and enjoy the rest of the show. Peace. To keep up to date with all things alien theorist theorizing, follow us across social media on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, and Facebook. For updates on new videos and content on YouTube, don't forget to click like and subscribe and hit that notifications button to keep those eyes on the skies with alien theorists theorizing.